So welcome to another war game review for theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a new game from Multiman Publishing called A Victory Awaits. And by new, I mean this came out in 2022. So yeah, <laughs> it's new enough. Not like in June, right? Uh, yeah, it June, came out July. just before, because we bought this uh, at WBC. Yep. And it had like just finished... Like, they, they had these there, and everything else was going out in pre-order. So we've had this for a few months. Finally got it to the table. Uh, it is a big game. Uh, yeah, it is. Kind of volumetrically speaking. It's this, it's three maps. It's the whole of the Eastern Front. It's 1941, Operation Barbarossa. And it's just uh, that, that kind of early stage of, of the Germans kind of pushing out, basically. It's like... The, well, it's 1941, so yeah, it's the kickoff. It's, kick it's off, only yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so the first six months, right? Yeah. If you want to play the first, like the whole campaign, you're going to need a little bit of space for it because it's three separate max maps. Yes. And right? if you're playing that two player, that'll be quite long as well. But there's but but it's not long because of an a, a really huge amount of counters. It will be no. long because you're literally doing it's just a three different fronts. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. But they yeah. have, for the campaign game, they got multiplayer options. So you can play with, like, five or six people. Someone commands the south. Someone yeah. commands the center. And they're like, if, yeah. if you have a northern chit and a southern chit, those would get played concurrently. So if you play it multiplayer, it would be a much quicker game. Yeah. So we just finished up playing just the northern, the Leningrad scenario. So it's Army Group North trying to take Leningrad, right? And this is a nine-turn scenario. They, and they all are. The campaign's yeah. nine, campaign's turns. nine turns. They, they, There's no shorter scenarios or anything in there. Yeah. And the scenarios are anywhere from like three to eight hours is what they say. And, I and think, we did this in about three hours? Yes. Three and, and a half. And I think the Leningrad one is on the shorter side of it because it it has the fewest counters. Okay. It's the little, it's the smallest geographical play space. The Smolensk one and the Kiev maps are a bit bigger. At least, like there's like delineations of this big black line up through the map. Yeah. It's like this is where you play. Uh, so I had a really enjoyable time playing this. No doubt. Uh, I think if I was gonna, you know. Not only is my table not big enough for the three maps, but I think playing this game and viewing it almost as like a tri-pack of three different games is a really nice way to look at it because mm -hmm. it's three really manageable, really easy to learn East Front games in a box. Mm -hmm. And that makes it well, well worth it, let alone if you wanted to. And I've seen people online doing it, play the big campaign as like six yeah. players. I'm like, that looks fun. Because That does you, look interesting, well, yeah. You get into the jostling and arguing between commands of where the yeah. borders are and what you do and don't control where the weak points are and i'm like that's a cool simulation of probably what real high mm -hmm. command is like mm -hmm. where people are yelling and screaming at each other if they're you're not doing it right no you're the one not doing it right right you've got to cover me here ah oh, you guys are useless that, that'd yeah, be you're that'd not be making a fun good, experience you're not making good progress <laughs> yeah but yeah just this scenario one mapper um really easy to set up uh the rule book is like 15 pages, but like the rules themselves are like 10. And they were fairly well written with clarity. Yeah. So uh, part of that is a victory awaits is in a blue box, but this is part of the red box series. So there's a victory denied. Part of the red box series, <laughs> but it's in yeah. a blue box. This is the, yeah, they got a victory denied and a victory lost. I believe okay. the two other ones, they come in a red box and it's other different parts. Of, and people refer to it colloquial, colloquially. As the red box series. Yeah, because... Okay, it makes perfect sense that we put it in a light blue, blue box. Yeah. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> the name doesn't... The series doesn't have a name. <laughs> right. It used to, but we're going to have to toss that one out and come up with something it, new now. If I had to come up with a simple name for this, you know, there's SCS, a Standard Combat Series. There's OCS, Operational Combat Series. There's BCS, blah, blah, blah. What would we call this? I genuinely don't know. I would call it KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. No, keep it simple series. Surely. There you go. Yeah, there you go. But it's, to me, it's, I mean, we were talking, <laughs> compare this to SCS, which I believe is the, considered the introductory to yeah. kind of all the series. This one I thought was simpler than that. It, it, it might well be. Yeah. It, it, and maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's similar. It's either on par or, or slightly simpler right. than SCS. So I would call it the KISS series. Yeah. Um, I, we're calling it that. Yeah. So if that's what you hear us talking about, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should petition that. Maybe, maybe we should. We maybe could become we should. 10 heirs. 
They pay us dozens dollars of dollars <laughs> for that great idea. So, so anyway, what, what I was trying to say, and, and you were saying it as well, uh, enjoyed the system, really good clarity in the maps. There's some things that we always argue over in war games. Yes. A couple of rules. Retreat yes. is one where invariably the rule book is very vague. <laughs> yeah. And retreat rules are either incredibly specific yeah. or incredibly vague. vague. And we have had many games where we sit there and I'm like, no, dude, no. But it, you just moved into strategic position because I kicked your butt. Remember that Stalingrad game and, we and played many, many years ago? And if the rules say you can't, yep. then... But in this game, they really made that retreat rule very, very clear. Yeah. Right? And, and, it was, and, and there's a couple of cases of like, yep. hey, if this happens, do this. If this happens, do this. Like it was very obvious, and yeah. then and the other one that we always complain about, especially in the East River, Front games, the river rule. is the river rule. <laughs> and the river rule is you are halved in attack ac going across a river, oh, so bad. and that is a rule for almost every war game. Yes. However, what they always never say is is what if one unit one is of on, the stacks is not across, is not the, river, across the river, and one of them is across yeah. the river. Yeah. There are so many games we've played where they just don't it's, mention it. It's silent, on and that. so we're always like. Yeah. Well, this that, one was not silent. Yeah, it said... It said specifically... If you're not attacking across the river, the second or third stacks are not halved. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and I just, Beautiful. That is a, a really great example that this 10-page rulebook is so crisp and mm. so clean. I read this start to finish. It took me probably 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, I've read a lot of rule books. Well, and you We've, skimmed it. You didn't read word for word necessarily. Uh, I did. Did you really? Okay, yeah. you're a speed reader. But, like, but, how, but uh, you, we say that. Half the rule book are yeah, graphics and some is pictures. Huge, and, yeah. huge pictures of like movement and it's stuff. It's actually very small writing though. Yeah, it is. But like that's that's not no, no, right. That's that, not two that's, pages of rules, right? That's one page. That's, yeah. Like but not even quite. It, and, and and some of the stuff as again, we've played a lot of war games. Like, I know how movement points work, right? <laughs> So like you spend your movement points. So I all my movement rules are here on the back of the train effects yep. chart. And then I the only thing I need to know is is how does strategic movement work? Because that's gonna be the little different. Yeah. So reading a rule book like this is very easy for me because I've read a lot of them. However, if you had never read a rule book before, this would be an excellent place to start because it's extremely clear. I felt like this had a a level of clarity that I was extremely grateful for yeah. because there's a lot of rule books that are not like that in any way. It was yeah. very concise. Many, many a war game designer could have written this into a 20 page rule book. Oh yes. Right? Yeah. That's a skill. At least 20 pages. <laughs> yeah. Maybe 30 and not have the clarity that you, that, that yeah. 14 page rule book but had. It, it, it was, so. I, 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 it's a huge credit to the design. Mm -hmm. And who uh, is the designer of this it one by is, the way? Uh, it is a great question. I should know this offhand, okay. but I don't. It I didn't is see it on the by, box. Which is, uh, to me, it's a crying shame that the name of the designer is not on the box. It's by uh, Tetsuya Nakamura. Okay, yeah. Japanese designer. Yes. and uh, Great job. I, I mean, it was... Yosh. Jozu yo. He'll, yes. under he'll understand. <laughs> I would love it if he watched this. It means fantastic, right? Great but job. It, but it really was so easy to learn and play. A and again... Yeah. It's a little chip pull game, which so be, is is always a good. It's a fun mechanic. Yeah, it's great. You don't never quite know what's going on, but it's yeah. also this would be an excellent solitaire game as well. Mm -hmm. So it being only 1941, it I don't want to say suffers from, but it definitely has that. Hey, the Germans are doing all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now it's going to get to a point where there's a little bit of counterattacking and positioning, kind of at the end once the. Russian reinforcements start getting in, and and the Germans are stretched. But those first couple turns, you're not you're not doing anything as the Russians. Yeah. You just get kind of obliterated. I don't care in this game because mm -hmm. the pace of the game was very quick. Yeah. And it the, wasn't a slog. No. Where you're getting kicked in the face. Yeah. You might have been getting kicked in the face, but it was quick. Yeah. And, and, so. And 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 the rules were simple, so I'm not like. I haven't learned a 40 page rule book to then get kicked in the face. Right. Like, it, mm -hmm. and, and it, I don't know, there was, a, there was enough to me in the supply rules and the command radius rules and what, and, and, you know, bringing in the reinforcements when they started coming in halfway through the game where I was like, okay, cool, I, I got uh, just about enough to do. 
But this would make a great solo game for that mm -hmm. reason as mm -hmm. well. Well, and talking about the chit pull a little bit, um, the chit pull had some interesting kind of twists. So, for instance, the Germans had uh, the, the von Manstein uh, chit, which when that is pulled, you have a choice. You can play it immediately. You can allow the next chit to be drawn and decide, do I hold this and allow that chit to be played? Or do I say, nope, I'm going to go ahead and preempt that and play my von Manstein. The von Manstein only uh, activates the fourth panzer, which is your powerful fourth. That's your sledgehammer in this game. The rest of your stuff is just, as the Germans, is just leg units, just trying to spread out, control the area, and hold you. Because you got to keep some forces over here to defend your supply, right? But that was very interesting, that concept of I have to make a choice about holding this chit or playing it, knowing I have another panzer, uh, a fourth yeah. panzer chit in the mix. And generally, I think I had four to five chits, four in the first three rounds, five in every round up till nine. And you had two, three, four, built up to five, and eventually got six at the end. Yeah. So it, it was interesting. It, it, there was a lot of tension in those chit pulls, and I, I didn't expect quite expect that. But the really cool thing is the supply chit. Yes. That, that, I thought, was one of the best parts. Supply doesn't matter for the Germans for the first three turns, so you don't worry about it. You just have to kick some butt yep. and extend yourself and get them out of the way and... and you know, uh, yeah. Hopefully, and, and then at the end of those first three turns, you've maybe kind of you've built a, a, yeah. a, a head that you can move out from. But that I think that seventh round came down to, and I made a big mistake. I sure. left my supply line open, and you moved some reserves into Riga, cut me off, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I I got back in time to try to save myself, but I needed one more, one more turn and that supply chip was drawn my forces were decimated yours were destroyed in the area because i'd cut you off but yes i but didn't you, have then the power you can't to recover do anything. from that as the yeah. germans so i conceded in turn whatever that was seven six or seven um but yeah a, a lot of tension there really like that chip pull i generally really enjoy chip pull it's i appreciate it as a mechanic as well because it's interesting there's some some I don't know what's going. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Who, who's going to go? There's a little bit of jeopardy in taking turns. Yeah. Right. In an I go, you go game, we can predict what's going to happen, yeah. and so you're you're playing that aspect of the game. Yeah. Whereas in a chip pull game, when when you make a gamble, it is much more of a gamble mm -hmm. because <laughs> if I move these out of position, you might draw two chits that allow you to then really take advantage of that, or vice versa. Yeah. That's really cool. I. I like chit pull. This was very good. Yeah. Or, and like I you said, it's, do I get the little Manstein one where it's like, yeah. ooh, I can hold on to that. I get fourth Panzer out. Then I can double activate with him and, and do some yep. cool Blitzkrieg stuff. In the Smolensk map, there's a Guderian counter that does the yeah. same thing. So if you start getting these larger ones, it's... You're then who's the Kiev leader? Is it... There, uh, there isn't one. Okay. I'm, there was historically, but... But they, he, not in the game. He, okay. he wasn't a tactical genius. I got guess. it, got it. I can't remember what his name was, but yeah, that, that, it's those two are the, like the fancy pants ones. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. The combat was quick and dirty. Like it's just, yeah. you add them up, here's your combat ratio, there's zero modifiers. Well, you don't have artillery, you don't have air power, you don't have... The only column shifts you have are from terrain. Yep. Or, or and then having from attacking across rivers, so you don't want to do that. But it's, all of that is map stuff. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about, like, combined arms bonuses. Nope. Tanks don't get bonuses into cities, or all the other stuff that you see. Like, it, this is a really refined, kind of stripped down system. Yeah. Like, you, you activate a, u, a command unit, Everything within four spaces is going to activate. They're all going to move. You're going to designate all your attacks. Yeah. You're going to resolve all those attacks. And then you're going to pull the next shit. And so the game just goes and goes and goes. It moves at a nice clip. It really, really, does. really, really nice. And, and there are times where the Russians don't have a lot to do. Like you pulled several chits and you're like, well, I'll move this guy 
a couple of spaces just to... Yeah, or like, I've already got myself in a good defensive position, so I'm just going to stamp out and do anything. That was the one thing I see from, and I played the Germans, so from the Soviet side, a lot of times these East Front games, I may be getting punched in the face, but I have the opportunity potentially to counterattack or... You don't have that opportunity as the Soviets here. You not, really, not, really especially don't. not in the first half of the game. I right. felt like once my reinforcements started coming in, potentially. Now I'm not doing any. I'm not doing a lot of attacks, but I'm at least moving and positioning to try and force yeah. your hand to do something else. I felt like I was at least doing something more useful. Well, I, I wanted to show the. So there's the CRT. You can see that right there. Get a good look at that. Pause it. The, the CRT. If you looked at the distribution for the attackers, they've only got like five or six spaces that are any bad things. Either no results or attacker losses. Those all come at low odds. One to one, one and a half to one, um, two to one, and, and three to one. Well, there's no losses on three to one. But the rest of them are all retreats. So the combat isn't necessarily deadly. It is... It's mostly retreating. Now, sometimes it has a 1R. Yeah, there's losses and stuff. But but the key to the combat is to get your units, the ones that aren't attacking because they can't get in, stacking limits only two, Yes. get them positioned such that when somebody has to retreat, they have to retreat through a zone of control. Like every good East Front game, this game encourages you to get surround, yep. make pockets. Cut off. Then you do an attack. And then they can't retreat, and so yep. you're going to eliminate people that way. Because yep. eliminating people straight from the CRT with attacks is very it's difficult, very, like you said. I mean, you can see it. 10 to, 10 to 1, which I, I had 10 to 1 multiple times. But, Basically, every roll is a loss, and that's good. And then there's a double retreat. So if I have guys surrounding you, you're not going to you're not going to survive that. No, but like your 10 to 1s they dry up the further east you go. Oh, no doubt. Because you've got all this nice open terrain well, where I've gets... got all my sweet tanks and I can yeah. easily move them. But then you start getting into the woods and then the marshes. And then even if you've got, you know, three hexes double stacked, you're going into things that then start adding shifts. And you can mm -hmm. at most get 10 to 1 and then you start taking shifts to cities or the, and there's fortresses yeah. and all these other things that go in there, and it's like, ugh, it gets harder and harder to get those amazing attacks in. So it encourages you once again more and more for the positioning, for the yep. surrounding of units. And, and I, I think every good East Front game should have that, show that, because yeah. that's that's a lot of what went on. The, the other thing I like, and you mentioned this about the terrain, the the odd terrain is really between Riga and Leningrad. Lots of marsh. There's some lakes here that really cut it off, but this this uh, meat grinder here, and I felt like I'm not questioning your play. That's oh, not, not what I'm doing. I, I'm not so sure you shouldn't have held that more, because man, that's just gonna be so slow. It was yeah, and maybe I would have done, but it was also like I was just gonna get surrounded. I would have died. Well, it, I mean, it's true. It's, it's it was tough because I only had like two guys there at first. I, I remember when we were setting up. I was looking at this kind of line. And I'm like, dang, that's that's kind of fun. As the Soviets, those heavy woods surrounded by light woods. You've got rivers crisscross crossing, and you can really, I think, put up a very desperate and slow defense and make the Germans really have to pay. But 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 that that's. To me, that's the genius in this design. It's very simple, but it has some maneuver and some positioning and some supply is very key. And that's ultimately how I lost because I made a big mistake. And it wasn't a big mistake. I was one hex yes. away from stopping that. And I just moved one hex, a little. None of what happened would have happened. It, it, and and I, I probably would have lost that game very yet. I regret that, but that, that's okay. It was a good exercise. It just makes it... It, it taught me so that next time I might, if I play the Soviets, I'm going to have some different ideas about how to try to stop that or, or yeah, what make what, it hard what to counter counter that. The the interesting thing up here, the Leningrad, talk about the the fortresses and the different. Uh, there's some really the the desperate, not the so desperate, the, yeah, yeah the standfasts. Sorry. I don't think they have any gameplay effect. Okay, but they uh, they might do. I don't think they do though. Uh, but they just they offer um, more victory points. Right, they add, they make areas. it just 10 points, they make it 
Yeah, the points. fortresses do something. I don't think the stand fast much, but like okay, the fortresses add to the combat. They yeah, give a plus two. Halfway through the game, you can start building these fortress markers, and it adds both a defensive modifier, which one and then two. But these are also count as steps that you can take for step losses. Yeah, yeah. And if you've got it built up to a two, you can take a step loss down to a one, and then in the next supply phase, you can build that back up to a yeah, two. Yeah, there again. you go. Yeah. So you have to be kill really them off, and then they're permanently gone from the game. But yeah. if you can get those fortresses going, you can really sustain a lot of losses. And they, and they prevent retreats. You can turn retreats right. into losses. Yeah. So instead, when you get that RR, you're like, cool, I'll just lose my dudes. And I don't have to leave that space and yeah. lose the game. The, the other interesting thing about those, though, I know we focused on looking at Leningrad and using them in Leningrad, but depending on which axis of advance the Germans choose, I think there's a couple different areas that you could look at building those to really... Because the reality is if the Germans don't get here, I think... By turn seven, I'm not sure they're going to have enough to get through this. But because of your reinforcements yeah, that come... it's, it's going to be tough. But that, if you're not here yeah. at seven, I don't think you can win the game realistically. Because there are not huge loss numbers. And by that point, you're not going to have... Or, I'm not going to be gonna attacking... Or you're going to win it like at the death at the very, turn nine. And, and it's like, oh. And, and isn't that what most games should be aiming and, for. And and yeah, I've played a number of these East game, Front style games and I love how difficult it is because it just shows you the kind of the insanity of what the plan was and how yeah. ambitious it was. Like, it, you like get there, but everything is, it's almost a Pyrrhic victory even if you do do it. Right. Because you will never get here in good order and you will never have any kind of reasonably secure supply lines. Well, it was the raggedy and then yeah. you like uh, the, creep the, into one The space. hope though was crush them here and they wouldn't come back, right? That Yeah. Crush them here, crush them down in Stalingrad and they're not, they're well, not yeah. going to come it's, back. Take Moscow and then take and Moscow and then it's over. Packed. But none of those worked. They all turned into meat grinders. Although this, they sieged for Quite a while, right? Yeah, yeah, years, and it was like so <laughs> interesting. We always ask ourselves, what what were the Germans thinking? But, but we always say that. But I love that this game does not get in its own way, and I think yeah. a lot of complex games suffer from that. The rules are so simple <laughs> that you're immediately just focused on the terrain, the maneuvering, the strategy of what I'm going to do to get there, and that yeah. I'm I'm just I'm playing this game. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing the rules, right. which something suffer from. What I'll do is I'll show you how this works, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up in, uh, in, with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Uh, this, is, this is kind of uh, at the end of our game slash halfway through it, but uh, this game is a chip pull game, so you have a cup, and in this cup are a bunch of chits, which uh, mostly uh, correspond to activating different HQ units, which have these little HQ symbols on them. Uh, there's a bunch of them across the board. Uh, there's a couple that do things like bring in reinforcements, and then there's also a supply chit that is the only time during the turn that supply is checked. And the game is quite simply, you pull a chit, and then you activate that uh, command uh, HQ and the surrounding units, and then you go again. So we pulled 16th, uh, uh, 16A, which is this one down here. And so it has a little four, let me show you. On this tiny little counter, the L4, the L is for Leningrad, because we're on the Leningrad map, and the four is its command range, and then the 16A is obviously its designation. It has a two in the uh, bottom left-hand corner for its, that's its combat value. And then the 10 is its movement value. Uh, so he was down here somewhere, sure, why not? So we're going to activate him, and everyone within four spaces uh, is going to activate. They're all going to move, if we want them to, and then once they're done moving, they're all going to attack. So in this game, you, you never get like used up. So for example, uh, over here, we've got two HQs. This guy, if he activates all these guys, they're all going to move and all attack. 
And then if we pull this dark blue chit afterwards, he can move them all again and attack with the begin. So keeping some HQs together and moving blobs, you can kind of double move within a turn. If you have fourth panzer army and you pull the little Manstein chit, he can, they can move another time. So you can get possibly three movements in a turn out of a group if you, if you blob them together. You know, it's Blitzkrieg. But uh, to activate, you just count within four hexes, all these little gray units for the Germans. They're all gonna move. They're gonna spend their five movement value because these are all kind of sad leg units. These are guys humping it on foot. So slow. And uh, they're just gonna spend their movement points on terrain. You know, open terrain or light woods is one movement point for leg units. When you start getting into the marsh or the wooded hexes, the, uh, the, the heavy wood, they're gonna start spending more um, more like two two movement points each. So they're just gonna kind of move them up. So this is one, two, uh, three. But then to move into a zone of control is an additional two. So this is one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna bring these guys up. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, crossing this river, this little railroad hex means there's a bridge. So they're gonna slide along in here. Uh, and then we could bring one of them in here. And these guys, uh, well, we can bring one of them in here. <laughs> Another guy can hop across here using all of his movement points across a non-bridged major river. Once you've done all your moves, and that includes moving HQ, let's say he's gonna move up here. And again, any faster units, they're gonna like charge across because they got like 10 movement points and they can move on the roads nice and easily. Once you've done all your moves, you're gonna declare your attacks and then you're gonna resolve your attacks. So here, let's just say we'll do these three on this guy here. He's out in the open. We've got three, six, nine. So we've got nine to two. That's gonna round down to four to one. And we've got our little CRT here. We just consult a little four to one chart. We're gonna roll a D6. So roll our little D6. And I rolled a two, which is just awful. We, we do one R, which is one retreat. If we'd have rolled better, we could have got two retreats for the RR. Or if we'd have rolled a six, we'd have got to take one step loss, then retreat, then retreat again. That's pretty much how you read this. So he's going to retreat one space. Uh, he's got to retreat towards the closest supply source. His supply sources are kind of all up here on this edge of the board or up in Leningrad, which is just off the camera. So he's gonna move back one, uh, and then we can advance after combat. So these guys are gonna kinda just fill that space, right? Really, really simple rules, nothing crazy complicated about it. Move, do all your attacks, that's the end of the command chit. We simply pull another chit, and then next up, hey, we pull the supply chit. We're gonna check everyone for supply. Uh, for the Russians, they just have to trace uh, an unbroken line of hexes all the way back to one of their supply sources on their edge of the map. The Germans, it's a little bit more punitive. They have to be able to count six spaces back to a, a railroad, and that railroad has to go all the way back to their supply sources down in Königsberg, basically. So they're cooking to go one, two, three, four, five, and then this railroad goes wee all the way down here, so they're good to go. Uh, some of these guys, it might be a bit more complicated because we've got dudes sat here, uh, blocking areas. We can trace supply through this way though. Um, but you're just checking to see this. Uh, these guys are out of supply. When you're out of supply, no out of supply markers in this game. They just get reduced, right? There's no lasting effects, you just get reduced. So if we pull, you know, we go through this whole turn, if we pull this again, these guys are just gonna all be eliminated. They're all gonna die. And so surrounding people and sitting there for a bit, whilst that might take some time, it's guaranteed to eliminate them without taking any losses. And so you're weighing up how much time do I want to spend doing this versus how much time do I need to progress across the board. Then we're gonna pull another chit and we're gonna pull fourth panzer group. Well, fourth panzer group is right here. We're gonna activate everyone, once again, within four spaces. So we can move guys, we can truck them up this way, or we could leave them here to try and keep these guys out of supply or do some attacks here. And once you're done with uh, all your moves, you're gonna attack with them again. You're gonna move on to the next one. And we pulled the 11th uh, Soviet army. Where did I do with that one? Oh, did he die? 
Or is he under here? No, that's dark blue. Well, oh, he's up here. Yay! That's this guy up here. Now, this poor guy doesn't have a lot of dudes in command. He's got the one he's stacked with, and then he's got this guy over here. This is a victory point city. And so, here, let me actually show you that <laughs> all the way up here. So he's going to truck this guy over here to protect this city from these guys. Uh, and then he's also just going to come and sit over here and uh, hopefully not get killed himself. But this that's what a chip pull is. It's unpredictable, the flow of the game with when the command chits come up. But, you know, it's great for silent air play. You're going to pull a chit and you're just going to activate that group and do the best thing that they can do. And then you're going to pull the next one and that's what's going to happen with the next guys that activate. Uh, so it's it's really easy because it's slightly less predictable. You just kind of play what's in front of you uh, with the kind of the grand goals uh, in in mind of, of what you're trying to do with the game. But that's that's really what the game is. You're trucking in reinforcements uh, on your on your railroads as kind of as far as you can. So once the Germans start pushing up towards Leningrad, you know you they have to sit on these railroads. Otherwise, you'll be able to swing reinforcements down to cut them off. Uh, and then they're all going to be out of supply. It's going to reduce victory points. They're all, you know, they're going to start getting reduced and eliminated if they can't alleviate that. And so the Germans are trying to push up, kind of put a screening force up that's as thin as and small as possible whilst keeping the enemy at bay and trying to smash Leningrad, having taken everything on the way up there, basically. But that's really how the game works. It's genuinely not more complicated than that. Uh, and uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Uh, I had a really enjoyable time I'd, learning and setting this up and playing this game. I'd give this two big thumbs up. Like, even from a graphic standpoint, I think this has done better than some of other MMPs, other games that we've played. Almost all of them. Right. This is better than almost all of them in the graphic design area. I think the map looks better. I think the counters look pretty good, although they're simple. My only beef yeah, is the black the counters, on the... Is that yeah? It's it's the the values at the bottom are in black, and yeah. on a on a red counter and on kind of like a dark gray it's counter. It's hard hard to see. That it. is tough. Like if I, those had been white, I would have yeah. not had a single complaint about this whole game. And wearing my glasses uh, was required because these are smaller counters, right? These are smaller hexes. Yes. Smaller counters. Um, are these you need to have your glasses on. I don't know what size are these. Are these half inch? Uh, or even smaller. I think they're that? smaller. Five sixteenths. Yep, I think that's what they are. That's very small. Isn't but it? graphically, I, I think it looks good. It it, it looked yeah, good. Yeah, the, map, the map's beautiful on the table. I thought the charts and stuff were clear. I, I actually like the box, the box art. I the, mean, it's a fairly standard. The counters are all labeled based on which map you play them on. So I have them bagged for the uh, Smolensk map and the Kiev map, and they've done like it's a really, really like user-friendly game. It's generally playable. speaking, yeah, it's eminently playable. I, I think we would consider this kind of an introductory style of war game. Meaning, I think anybody could pick this up. Yeah, uh, not a forty-page rule, but it also you can pick offers it up. a lot to oh, many to, to experience there's depth. plays. Oh yeah, no doubt. I, I, I think like it genuinely. Anyone could read this and pick this up and learn this and like... This but what I was saying is game. I think anybody can play it. So oh, yeah. you could use this to get people into this. And frankly, playing this, I, I had a good time. It was enjoyable. We like Hex Encounter games. Yep. I don't feel like we play as much anymore as we used to. I love it when we get one out like this and throw it down and have a good time. Um, but I, I would play this again in a heartbeat. I would also like to consider playing the full campaign with all three theaters with six people would be very interesting. That might be yes. something we could do at WBC or or Buckeye Game Fest. Because it is something, if you did that, if you had six people playing, four people play Germans and two people play Soviets. Yeah, there you go. And what happens is, is that the game, because this, a lot of the stuff gets done concurrently, because nothing would affect other things, Yeah. the 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 pace of the game doesn't change at all from us just playing one map. Yeah. Like, this took a few hours. If, if we'd gone the whole length, it's maybe six hours. I don't even think it's that long. Like, yeah, it, it might not even be that. I, I think to do the whole nine turns, we made it through We made it through six and started seven, and then I conceded. Some of the other maps have more stuff on them, so I think they're a bit longer than this Ma one. Maybe. But, like, 
you're playing three games concurrently yeah. with a few arguments here and there. It'd and be some, kind of cool. Granted, but it's also not long. Like no. it's still it's still only like four, five, six hours. Yeah. Like yeah. I think that's that's a really cool promise that this yeah. game has. Yeah. So yeah, I had a, I had a blast with this. I love uh, a game that's like really easy to pick up, and and it's more about the the game rather yeah. than learning a new system. It was like I cannot stress to you how easy this is. If you played any amount of Hex and Counter War games, you'll look at this rule and be like, "Yep, yep, yep, yep got yep, it. Let's go. go." I mean, I felt like eighty five percent of the rules I already had. Right? Yep. We just tried to learn the fifteen percent that we. That were kind of unique to this, and I I like that. As far as East Front games go, I really like this one. Yes, I I thought it was very good. I would like to play the Soviets because I I can see some of the fun in doing what you were doing because you're not aggressive. You're you're more maneuvering, dropping back, and planning. And, and perhaps and I'm on a, some of the other maps that might be a bit more fulfilling. Right. But I overall, this was a very good experience, and for an East Front game, I really liked it. So. Yeah. This might be one of my top East Front games. Stacking limit of two counters, regardless. Yeah. So you don't have death stacks. Well, and I, your stacking choices are also then very important. Yeah. Of what you stack together and where. And occasionally, I had to take out a leg unit and put another Panzer in because legs suck. I mean, they <laughs> they move. They, it's not movement good. is five turns or five ra five spaces, and a Panzer's ten. And I had to kind of get my Panzers out front and have my leg catch up. So. There were times that I changed those stackings, and I liked that. That was kind of cool. Yeah. R really liked this. I had a good time with this. I'm glad we bought it. Yes. I'm glad we played it. And this is kind of the end of our 2022 run. I think we've got four or five more games we still want to play. Yep. But I, this is good. I enjoyed it. Yes. I'd recommend this to anybody. Victory awaits. Yeah. Uh, uh, from the Red Box series. From the Red Box series. <laughs> from multi -map. I couldn't agree with you more. There basically isn't a person that I wouldn't recommend this no. to. No. Like, it's so simple, but yeah. it can offer, like, good midweight depth to people as well mm -hmm. who are more intense with wargaming. Yeah. Really enjoyable. I had a blast with it. And, and, and there is something... I know a lot of people look at games like this just like, what the hell are you doing, right? There is something magical about moving cardboard counters around on a hex-based map... There's just something intriguing about it. From the very first game we played of it, or any any Hex Encounter, I've been, I've loved it. So I'm glad to feel this magic again. I We've played some good ones this year. Uh, BCS Aerocourt. We've That's played right. Salerno 43. I mean, th there's been several that we've played. I wish we had more Hex Encounter played this year, but there just haven't been a lot of new ones that we've... That we've gotten to yeah, we, as a part of it. We it's got just, we got a lot to do. But yeah. I enjoyed this, would love to play it again. I'd like to take this to a con and play a big game yes. with six other players or five other players. <laughs> Victory awaits MMP. Go and check this out. We're going to go and buy the other ones in this series now. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander with BlazeAid.com. And I'm Grant.